What if one of the most powerful economies on the planet just made a move that could reshape the entire global tech landscape, and almost no one is talking about it? What if China's recent 10.9% drop in semiconductor imports isn't just a statistical blip, but the early warning sign of something much bigger already underway? This isn't just a supply chain story. It's not simply about numbers or market adjustments. It's about something deeper, about power, strategy, and the future of technology itself. Because if you zoom out, what's happening right now may be one of the most consequential industrial pivots of the 21st century, with far-reaching implications that could shift the balance of global influence. And if you're in tech, finance, policy, or any field connected to global markets, this isn't just relevant, it's personal. According to newly released customs data, China's semiconductor imports have plummeted nearly 11% compared to the previous year. That's not a normal fluctuation. That's billions of dollars in purchasing power redirected or removed altogether. And those dollars were going to some of the biggest players in the global chip industry. Companies like Intel, Qualcomm, NVIDIA, and Samsung. This sudden drop sent waves through boardrooms in Silicon Valley, policy meetings in Washington, and financial institutions around the world. But what's even more important is what this decline represents. Because it's not happening in isolation. It's part of a long-term, deeply coordinated strategy that's been quietly gaining momentum for years. And now, it's accelerating. Semiconductors are at the heart of everything. From smartphones and smart cars, to cloud computing, defense systems, and artificial intelligence. For decades, China has been the largest buyer of chips, spending vast sums to power its rise as a tech superpower. But that behavior is changing. Not because demand has disappeared, and not because of a slowing economy, but because the rules of the game have changed. The goal is no longer to buy chips from others. The goal is to make them at home. For years, China has pursued self-sufficiency in semiconductors. Under its Made in China 2025 initiative and beyond, the country has invested hundreds of billions of dollars into building out domestic chip production, constructing fabs, subsidizing state-backed chip firms, funding research and development, acquiring intellectual property, and building an entire talent pipeline. And what might look like a decrease in imports is, in reality, the quiet beginning of a much larger... There's a growing body of evidence that suggests China has been stockpiling chips in anticipation of potential sanctions, much like countries build up oil reserves. And now that they've built up a strategic buffer, they may be ready to initiate the next phase, replacing dependence with dominance. This shift is already producing results. Chinese chip makers are no longer simply playing catch-up. In some areas, especially in AI chips and advanced custom processors, they're starting to exceed expectations. Designs are becoming more sophisticated. Manufacturing processes are becoming more competitive. And whispers from within the industry suggest that in some corners, China may already be further along than many global leaders realize. If China succeeds in building a fully self-reliant semiconductor ecosystem, the consequences will be profound. This isn't just about producing domestic alternatives. It's about fundamentally altering the flow of power in the global tech order. A China that doesn't rely on Western chips becomes a China that controls its own digital destiny, immune to the leverage of export bans, trade restrictions, and geopolitical coercion. But this is only one layer of a much deeper story. Because beyond the industrial investments and policy shifts lies a broader strategy, one that treats technology not just as a tool of innovation, but as a means of geopolitical leverage. Western governments, especially the United States, have responded with increasingly aggressive measures. Tighter export controls, bans on advanced chip sales, restrictions on critical chip-making tools like EUV lithography systems. The goal is clear. Slow China down, hold the line, maintain the lead. But ironically, these restrictions may be accelerating China's push. What was once a long-term ambition has now become an urgent national priority. The pressure has lit a fire under the country's innovation engine. The more the world tries to contain China, the more determined its leadership becomes to forge a path no one can block. And here's where the story gets even more consequential. Because China is not just building conventional semiconductor capabilities. It is actively investing in radical new technologies, efforts that could upend the very architecture of computing as we know it. Across the country, behind tightly controlled lab doors and inside heavily funded research centers, Teams are working on photonic chips that transmit data with light instead of electricity. Quantum processors that leverage subatomic physics for mind-bending computational speed. 
Bio-integrated circuits that begin to merge biology and technology in ways once confined to science fiction. These aren't just theoretical exercises. There are working prototypes. Some are already in early stages of production. And internal planning documents leaked from within Chinese semiconductor firms reveal an aggressive timetable. China is aiming to bring these new technologies to market within 12 to 18 months, not decades from now, not in some speculative future, but imminently, soon enough to cause real disruption in real time. If these efforts succeed, China won't just close the gap. It will leap forward, setting the standard for the next generation of global computing. It won't just reduce dependency on foreign tech. It will eliminate the need for it and offer the world a completely new ecosystem to adopt. And that's where things shift from technological competition to a true inflection point in global influence. For decades, the Western world, especially the United States, has maintained technological dominance largely through its control of semiconductor design and manufacturing. It's been a cornerstone of economic strength and strategic power. But if China manages not just to catch up, but to define the next computing paradigm, then the global center of gravity will shift. And not gradually. It could move decisively and rapidly toward the east. This could mean the end of a unified global tech ecosystem. Instead of one interconnected supply chain, we may soon have two incompatible spheres, one shaped by Western standards and one by China's emerging infrastructure, with different protocols, design languages, hardware architectures, and even philosophical approaches to computing. Countries around the world could face new and difficult decisions, forced to choose between ecosystems or risk being left behind. The implications go far beyond the tech industry. Investors will have to reassess everything, product roadmaps, capital allocations, research bets, and long-term viability. Entire industries could be destabilized. Markets could shift overnight. And the old assumptions about who leads and who follows in tech may no longer hold true. And this is why that single data point, the 10.9% drop in chip imports, matters so much. It's not a footnote. It's a signal, a warning, a quiet but undeniable indication that something massive is happening beneath the surface. Because this isn't just about buying fewer chips. It's about rethinking what chips are. It's about redefining how they're made, how they're used, and who controls the future of computing. If China succeeds in its mission, and signs suggest it might be closer than we think, then the global tech order won't just evolve. It will be rewritten, not incrementally, but fundamentally. And now the question becomes, how will the rest of the world respond? Will Western governments invest aggressively in their own next generation technologies? Will they continue with restrictions or pivot toward collaboration? Will nations come together to prevent fragmentation? Or will they fracture further into competing digital realms? Because one thing is now certain. The semiconductor revolution is no longer a future scenario. It's here. It's happening. And the next chapter is already being written. The only question that remains is who gets to hold the pen.